welcome back to Joe's RC Corner and uh, just a quick update for you guys on how the Super Chipmunk is looking right now. Uh, we've gotten all the white base coats done and we've gotten the ailerons hinged, the elevator and rudder are also hinged. So I wanted to give you just a quick sneak peek at the aircraft uh, as it sits right now um, with the, uh, the white on it. So. Uh, we apologize for my look, but I uh, haven't gotten cleaned up, been working on the plane. So um, anyway, so quick update. Here's the aircraft as it is right now. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, and uh, always open to new suggestions on things. Uh, and as everybody knows, uh, the paint that I'm using, let me grab a can of it here. Because I've had a couple of questions on what paint I was using, and it's the uh, Rust-Oleum 2X uh, primer and color in one. It works really good. Uh, it's the same uh, same paint that I've used on my Cougar here, as you can see. Uh, only this was blue, of course, and the yellow. Uh, but it's the same paint. So, and that came out really good. That's what uh, made me decide to go ahead and. Uh, do use the same paint on this aircraft too. So without further ado, here she is. Okay, so as you can see, she is uh, white right now and uh, we are waiting for the white base to fully cure before I start laying tape down. I don't want any of that white to start peeling up when I peel the, the, the uh, tape lines off. One of the other things I still got to work on, uh, the cowl right now is just sitting on top. It hasn't been, um, it's, it's not screwed on yet. Uh, you got to put the hardwood mounts in there still, drill it, and uh, get that positioned properly. So that'll be one of my other steps. But as you can see, the uh, hinges are now done. So here are the aileron hinges, they're moving. They are uh, epoxied in with uh, uh, pinned hinges, so I used a little bit of the um, Vaseline on the hinge points uh, on the pins to make sure that the epoxy doesn't jam those in. Uh, I'll come across to the other side. You see this one is also, uh, is all glued in. And uh, it is tricky getting these hinges in because they are being epoxied to uh, the foam core and the sheet in, and it's not much there to hold that in there. Um, if I did it again, I would have uh, put some uh, bigger balsa, balsa wood blocks in here at each point where I was hinging, even in the aileron itself, because this is, again, foam core, uh, basically just cut out of the main core. So uh, if I did it, if I was gonna do this again, which uh, probably won't because they don't make this kit anymore, uh, but if I was going to, uh, I would cut this out and put uh, a little bit more meat in there to grab onto, but I don't think they're going to go anywhere. Uh, they seem pretty tough, tough here. I can't seem to pull them out at all. Uh, I used 30 minute epoxy with a little bit of micro balloons in there to uh, make sure that there was uh, enough, a little bit of fiberglass basically mixed in it. So uh, still got to get the servos in there. Uh, the horns are installed here. Uh, they're embedded in the in the aileron itself um, but uh, yeah so that's done the elevator is also hinged the rudder is also hinged in here the control rod for the rudder is actually attached to the tail wheel as well and this uh, got an l-shaped um, uh, torque rod in here that goes into the rudder itself so there's uh, you know th this type of setup there's going to be a little bit of slop um, but gives a nice hidden uh, hidden setup there. Um, again, elevators are, are glued in uh, as well, hinged. These use the Robart pin uh, point hinges. And then there's the uh, metal bar that connects the two elevators together here. Um, I am extremely happy with how smooth this all came out. I, I, I know it's not, it's not perfect, I, I get that, but uh, uh, I'm really happy with it. You can see it's very smooth and blends in nicely. The canopy still has some work to do, guys. Um, 
the this is only the temporary glued on but basically this is how the hatch is going to work here um, it's magnetic so that part works still uh, but uh, like I said there's I've been having some issues with this every time I've been playing around with it and you touch it it starts to crack everywhere it is fairly old this canopy so um, it's yellowed looks like it's been sitting it sat in a garage somewhere for quite some time so what I'm going to be looking for is I did order from uh, fiberglass specialties uh, a new canopy uh, however it's not for the quick build sig kit it's actually for the Carl Goldberg uh, kit which was a 60 size airplane as well however uh, it was more of a square fuselage so I'm not sure how it's going to fit uh, when I get it we'll take a look at it and I'll show you how it's all going to work on there but uh, uh, basically yeah that's that's really where where it is at this point right now so there it is there she is really happy with her so far she's coming out really nice uh, one other thing I wanted to make sure everybody is aware of what I'm doing here for the color scheme so this model was based off of uh, Skip Volk's aircraft and Skip Volk had a beautiful starburst pattern on his aircraft in red, white, and blue. Still had the Pennzoil logo on it, um, but it was uh, it was actually uh, end number November one 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 four Victor. Uh, now, yes, Art Scholl eventually had that aircraft, um, but it originally belonged to skip volk and skip volk his color scheme was a little bit different and if this will focus here is a picture of skip volk's aircraft and that's the color scheme we're going for it's got the starburst on the tail starburst on the wing and then the red white and blue pennzoil and so on with the stars um, and the reason for that is Here's a picture of my father with Art Scholl with this same airplane. Now this was uh, the, this kit, he built this airplane, um, I, I'm not sure exactly when it was, uh, maybe late 70s, early 80s, uh, but uh, so he had this air, the same airplane from uh, SIG and he flew this airplane up in Rhode Island at Quonset uh, Point. Uh, and Art Scholl was there and he was impressed with the aircraft. Uh, I'm sure he has tons of stories about it, but uh, yeah. So that's why we're doing this airplane, okay? So if anyone's wondering, that's why I'm building this airplane here. I'm building this airplane for him. Um, we're going to paint it the same colors that he had. And then we'll take you guys along for the maiden flight of it when it's done. So, again, like I mentioned, we're going to be leaving this aircraft sitting there for uh, two weeks. And the reason for that is, so I want the paint to fully cure on the aircraft uh, before we start doing anything on it. And then on top of that, uh, what I'm going to do next afterwards is start doing the paint line. So two weeks, and, and part of the reason for that also is I'm going to be out of town next week, uh, not this week here, but the, the, the following week, because I'm going out to AUVSI uh, for Exponential, which is up in Chicago with my work. And uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, RC airplanes, because I'm always open to talking about RC airplanes. It's my passion. It's what got me into unmanned aircraft in the first place. So check me out if you're, uh, if you're in the area. So with that, see you guys next time, all right?